Hi, sixth graders at MMS. This is Mr. Bickford bringing you Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Part 2. What you're going to need is your composition book to take notes, if that's how you choose to take notes, or a fresh Cornell note page. What you see on this page and what you watch me explaining is what you should be writing in your notes. Uh, remember, you can pause it, back it up if you need more time, rewind it. Let's go ahead and get started. Today's topic is we are still going to be finding greatest common factor and least common multiple. The first part of the lesson, you learned how to do this using factor rainbows and also making lists of multiples. Today, I'm teaching you another way to do it. Here's what the topic is. You are going to find greatest common factor and least common multiples using factor trees and Venn diagrams. Okay, so this lesson uh, is showing you another way to find greatest common factor and least common multiple. Uh, so the problem that we're going to look at is find the greatest common factor and least common multiple for Find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple for the numbers 36 and 60. So the first thing we're going to do is, is uh, use factor trees to get what's called the prime factorization for each number. Here's what that looks like. I'm going to write 36 and 60. Then what you need to do is think about what two numbers multiply together to make 36. And there's lots of combinations you can use. Uh, 4 times 9 might jump into your head. 6 times 6. All those are good. As the only one you can't use is 1 times 36 because you, we've got to break it down. Can't use 36. I am going to break it down into 12 times 3. Again, you could have done 6 times 6 or 4 times 9. It doesn't matter. If you break it down correctly, you're going to wind up with the same set of numbers at the end. If you have a number that you can't break down anymore, you circle it. That's called prime. I can't break down 3 any farther, so I stop. 12 can break down into 4 times 3. Circle that 3, and 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. I can't break down 2's any further. That is my factor tree for 36. But again, if you would have chosen a different start, like 6 times 6, you would have still got these numbers. After you get done, you can't break down anything, put these numbers in order. And it just lucked out for me that they are in order. Usually they're not. Okay, So I'm going to write 2 times 2 times 3, times 3. That's all these circled numbers. So write your factorization in order. I lucked out they were in order. If you want to test if this is right, multiply this string. What's 2 times 2? That's 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. It worked. I'm going to do the exact same thing with 60. There's many ways I could multiply to get 60. 2 times 30, uh, 3 times 20. The one that jumped into my mind first, though, was this. 10 times 6. Can 10 break down? Can 6 break down? Yes, they can. 10 breaks down into 5 times 2. And I can't break those down any further, so I circle them. How does 3 break down? into 3 times 2, 
and I can't break those down any further. That there's my prime factorization for 60 using a factor tree. Now I'm going to write those numbers in order. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Now I've got my a factorization for 60 and a factorization for 36. So that's step one, using factor trees. The next thing you're going to do is use these strings to make, to diagram a Venn diagram. I'm going to draw two circles. This is a Venn diagram. Uh, I'm going to label this circle 36. I'm going to label this circle 60. Now I'm looking at these two set of factors and I'm going to put them into the Venn diagram. If I see the same number in this set of numbers and this numbers, I'm going to put it right here, but I only have to write it once. If I, this two and this two, I'm going to cross those out, but I only need to write it down once because if I write a number two there, it's part of 36 and it's part of 60. I'm going to cross out this two because I see another two here and I only need to write it once. If I put it in this shared spot, it's part of 36 and it's part of 60. And I notice that there's actually another number that they both have. Here's a 3 and here's a 3. So I put a 3 right there. Because they're in the shared spot, this 2, this 2, and this 3, those factors are part of 36 and they're part of 60. I still have a 3 left on 36 but only the 36. There's not a 3 to match it up with here. And I have a 5 left on my set of 60 factors. After you get the Venn diagram, here's how you use it to find greatest common factor and least common multiple. So I'm going to write those over here. Greatest common factor and least common multiple. Here's how that works. I look at my shared factors and I multiply those all together. Those are, that becomes my greatest common factor. 2, 2, 3, and they get multiplied together. 2 times 2 times 3. Multiply this all together. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 is my greatest common factor for 36 and 60. Here's how I use the Venn diagram to get my least common multiple. I'm going to highlight the whole thing. All of these numbers multiplied together make your least common multiple. So I need to write down all those numbers. 3, 2, 2, 3, 5. 3 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. That's a lot. Use your calculator if you need it. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. And 36 times 5 is, again, calculator if you need it, but what you would get is 180. Okay? So, this lesson was all about factor trees, breaking down your numbers into factorizations, putting them into a Venn diagram, and then using the Venn diagram, shared factors become your greatest common factor, least common multiple, is all the numbers in your diagram multiplied together. Before I go, uh, your first chance for hidden treasure is this. This question, how do you check how do you check what your math assignment is every day? You should know how to do this.
the answer, uh, so the person that I pick tomorrow could win something, this is the answer. Hopefully you knew this, but the answer is your remind messages. That's always where you can check your assignment for the day either on your device, which some of you have, or your student Gmail, which everybody has practiced getting into. So tomorrow, if you are the lucky person that gets called, if you can answer that question, how do you check what your math assignment is? You're going to say, check your remind messages. That's all for today. See you next time.